Wilson's Wildlife Solutions. Important! This critter profile is outdated. Due to recent events, the critter profile for our good boy Sparky is no longer up to date. I will try to personally update it with relevant information regarding him and our guest within the next couple of days. I just need to sit with what happened for a while. Thank you for your understanding. Signed, Tim Wilson. Critter Profile, Sparky. Overview. Name, Sparky. Species, Canis Lupus Familiaris. Dog, Bernese Mountain Dog to be exact. Primary Caretaker. Terrestrial Team, Jeremy Hudson, Daniel. No, he said he'd prefer to keep his surname private. Diet. Dog food. Sparky will eat any food, but he really likes beef and pork. Housed. Wilson's Wildlife Center, Canine Enclosure 2. Creature features. Sparky is the name of this beautiful little Bernese mountain dog. Although Sparky doesn't really like other dogs or any other critters really, and prefers to live and play by himself, he has shown a lot of interest in interacting with our personnel. But most of all, he loves his owner Daniel. More on that later. Sparky is a pretty sleepy fella, which is pretty ironic considering his name, who likes to snooze for most of the day in his comfy pen. Once in a while, he peeks through its door and wags his tail at us. He's just so friendly to us caretakers. Hopefully, with the help of our therapy animals, we will be able to show Sparky that not all critters are bad. Now, Sparky is a very unusual dog. If you look closely at his back paws and some parts of his belly, there, you can see some bone structures and flesh sticking out of him. He's even got a big gaping hole in his chest cavity, but that doesn't seem to bother him at all. Our vets were really concerned when he first came in, and even examined Sparky multiple times. But it seems he really doesn't care. He's just fine with his bony and fleshy self. His lower body parts are also somewhat constantly dirty, no matter how hard our volunteers try to shower his belly. Additionally, it is notable that Sparky has some problems with his eyes and muscles from time to time. Once in a while, he will lose control of himself, flopping on the ground like a doof. Poor guy. However, the rehabilitation team and I are working hard on teaching him how to control his body a little better. One thing that does worry me, however, is how often pieces of him just fall off. One day we'll come into his pen to find that his tail or a paw just fell clean off. But we do our best to stitch him back together every time. History We initially got a hold of Sparky when his owner, Daniel, came into our wildlife center with him in his arms, clearly not happy about Sparky's condition. He was in a very messy state, flesh mangled, skinny, and bones jutting out of him. Daniel was crying, asking us what did he do wrong? So we gave him some basic dog care advice. Unfortunately, he didn't seem to take too kindly to that and only cried harder. But we weren't going to give up on Sparky. We covered his damaged feet in bandages, stitched up the exposed bits of flesh and bone, at least the parts we could, and gave him a luxurious bath. I won't lie, it looked very grim for a while. Our vets couldn't hear his heartbeat, and he didn't seem to want to move. But after a few hours of trying and trying, we helped him walk again. We still have a lot of work to do in the rehabilitation department, but we're making very big progress in these regards. We also need to get new stethoscopes because our old ones are clearly faulty. Since his arrival, Daniel's been showing up every day to check on Sparky. He is clearly very engaged and loves him very much, but we are very confused as to what happened. When asked what caused Sparky's condition, he kept murmuring about how it's all his fault and how he doesn't know what went wrong. We didn't press on him as it clearly was a bad memory. Plus, we're not the ones to judge here at Wilson's. Like the sign says, every critter is welcome. Special needs and accommodations. Sparky is currently housed within a solo canine enclosure due to his problematic relationships with other critters. We're currently trying to teach him to understand that living with other doggos is really fun but he has quite a hard time figuring it out. His pen is filled with comfy grass and a pillowed part where he can sleep without a problem. Once in a while, we buy him a new toy to cheer him up in his voluntary isolation, and he seems to enjoy them very much. Just remember, don't buy any toys resembling animals. Remember to keep a needle and plenty of thread around in case pieces fall off a of Sparky. Sparky should be fed twice a day, with his water being changed every hour or so. He's quite the drinker, you see. It goes right through him, literally. Sometimes you can see it falling out of a hole near his butt and onto the ground. 
Our vets still don't know what's up with that. Sparky should be allowed free roam of our patio, with Daniel being able to come around him whenever either of them wants to. His presence has been shown to greatly increase Sparky's happiness. Notes about Sparky. It seems that Sparky still has a couple secrets up his sleeve, though. You see, during his time with Jeremy, one of his very hard-working caretakers, some very weird events have taken place near him. It seems that he is quite the magician, even for our standards. Jeremy told us that during playtime, he accidentally threw Sparky's favorite toy onto one of the trees on our patio. And although Sparky was very much too short to reach that tree, when Jeremy went to get the ladder to be able to, when he returned, Sparky already got the toy back in his paws. A really surprising fella he is, and knows his ways in sticky situations, it seems. The toy Sparky rescued that day is unfortunately no longer with us. We lost it two days ago and can't find it anywhere. Thankfully, Jeremy bought Sparky a new and shiny toy, almost identical to the previous one. He was very happy with it. It also seems that no matter his somewhat problematic shape and physiology, Sparky is quite the eater. Though we try to keep him well fed with the best of foods, he sometimes gets carried away and eats the grass and dirt in the patio. It's quite the bizarre diet for a dog, especially for his size. But it seems he enjoys it, so we don't forbid him that much from doing so. Email Correspondence Sent by Tim Wilson Recipient Jeremy Hudson Date November 2nd Hey Jeremy, I'm writing to you to inform you that during my watch over Sparky, he started being very aggressive to other critters, especially our cats next door. I know that not liking cats is normal behavior for dogs, but this worries me. Sparky started shaking violently when he saw even the smallest of them, and even managed to shake loose an ear. This has never happened before. Please forward this message to his rehabilitation team. Signed, Tim. Sent by Tim Wilson. Recipient, Jeremy Hudson. Date, November 4th. Hey, Jeremy. Sorry for bothering you again this busy weekend, but do you know where Furball is? You know, the cat from Enclosure 2? He says on her clipboard that you were the last person to feed her. I've really looked everywhere and can't find her for the love of me. If you have any information regarding her whereabouts, please notify me. Signed, Tim. Sent by Tim Wilson. Recipients, staff, volunteers, everyone. Date, November 5th. It is with great sadness that I must announce that Furball has been found dead. I have no idea what could have done this to her. Her entire body was twisted beyond recognition, with fur missing all from her face. The worst part was whatever did this to her also took her eyes. Rest assured, we will be monitoring all security footage of the last few days in an effort to discover who or what did this to our beloved Furball. If you have any ideas, please don't hesitate to talk to me in my office. Signed, Tim. Sent by Tim Wilson. Recipient, Jeremy Hudson. Date, November 6th. Jeremy, Anna and I are starting to worry. You haven't been to work in three days now. You know I'm not one of these people to make you stay overnight, but we could really use your help here, man. Sparky seems to be falling apart more often, and we're running low on thread to stitch him back up, so if you can grab some on your way back, that would be appreciated. <sighs> Sorry if I'm a bit messy, but Punchy went missing today too, and we're all pretty distraught. We don't want to repeat a furball. Signed, Tim. Sent by Tim Wilson. Recipient, Jeremy Hudson. Date. November 7th. Jeremy, please come to work now. We have a very serious emergency. We locked all the animals in their pens, but more and more of them keep disappearing. Daniel hasn't responded either. Last time I saw him, he was reading some sort of weird looking book. Anna told me the title was some creepy stuff, something along the lines of souls and somas. Apparently it's about thaumaturgency or something like that. You spent a lot of time with Daniel. Would you happen to know anything about this? Signed, Tim. Sent by Tim Wilson. Recipients, staff, volunteers, everyone. Date, November 8th. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I must share this with everyone. Last night, Sparky went on a rampage. Anna and I tried restraining him, but weird shadowy tentacles came out of him and tossed us aside. He then got out of his enclosure and proceeded to the feline enclosure next door and... 
ate all of Minerva's kittens. Every last one. We tried to stop him, but couldn't. Had it not been for Daniel, who suddenly appeared screaming at Sparky, I'm sure we would have lost more. He seemed to calm down for a bit, but then he started shaking violently before exploding. There were pieces of him and black goo everywhere, and in his place was this weird transparent thing that looked like nothing I've ever seen before. It and Daniel gave each other a long final look, with Sparky giving out a short whimper before it let out an ear-splitting howl and disappeared through one of the walls. I will be taking a day off to process everything that has happened. If the supervisors need me, tell them Faye is in charge for now. Thanks for understanding. Signed, Tim. Sent by Wilson's Wildlife Solutions Automated Email Response Bot. Recipients, Tim Wilson. Date, November 8th. System Notice, User, Tim Wilson. The account of user, Jeremy Hudson. You have been messaging for the last seven days. Has not been active for a moderate amount of time. Due to this, the messages sent by you were not received nor read by anyone. The last time user Jeremy Hudson was logged in was November 1st, 1500 hours, 23 minutes. Terminal 3, Wilson's Wildlife Center, Canine Care Center, Enclosure 2, Sparky. Sent by Daniel. Recipient, Tim Wilson. Date, November 8th. <sighs> I'm so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. I should have never tried bringing him back. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <sighs>